You know, we are in a lifelong endeavor to have a relationship with God. And we know, brethren, that His Word must never be far from our minds. It must really always be living and alive and active in our minds. And that, as we apply that Word in our lives, our relationship with God grows deeper. What ha starts to happen is that we, we change our thinking. We become more like the character that God wants us to have wants us to be and his law his word becomes etched into our hearts and that's exactly what he's after he wants us to be changed in a way that we have the law of God written in our hearts that is our covenant with him that he would write that law into our hearts and we know that as we follow the law of God what happens in our lives we find the blessings that come for obedience uh, you know, if I'm yielding to others, yielding to God, I'm not going to end up in a bunch of traffic situations or altercations, for instance, as we're using that example today, yielding. And also, also we see other blessings come, many blessings come. We escape so much trouble because we apply ourselves to the law of God that we have in our minds, have in our hearts. We know which way to go in life. But that can't happen. We can't be choosing that way of life and, unless that word is alive in us, right? It has to be living there in our hearts. And one of the things we do as Christians, one of the basic activities, if you will, as Christians is to meditate on the law of God, to have that word always in our minds and hearts. Several weeks ago, uh, Chuck sent out email about uh, Psalm 119, a beautiful psalm which uh, I, I, I agree with him that was written by King David. And quite often in there, you see where David is talking about meditating on the Word of God. And so meditation for a Christian is like, that's like 101, isn't it? That's like what we have to do, one of the building blocks of our Christian life. And so, so often we hear at services when a man gets up to pray before or after the service, he asks, help us to apply what we've learned today. Put it into action. Make it work in our lives. In other words, to have that word in us, in our minds, and using it, putting it to work. Well, we need, as Christians, to take time every day to meditate on the Word of God, making it sure that that Word is working in our lives, that it's there and active in us. A few weeks ago, uh, again, we talked about Psalm 119 where David wrote that. Well, David had a lot to say about meditation. Let's go look at one of his Psalms, and this is 19, not 119, but Psalm 19, a very beautiful psalm. So the purpose of today's message is really to encourage us to engage ourselves in that daily Christian activity of meditating on the Word of God. I love this psalm that we're looking at. I love many, many psalms. I'm think, thinking you do the same. You have your favorites that really have struck home with you. This one for a long time has been, I think, uh, very beautiful to me to think about what David is talking about here about the law of God about the law of God he starts I'm gonna start in verse 7 where he says the law of God the law of the Lord is perfect it's perfect there's nothing nothing wrong nothing no shadow of questioning it's perfect everything about the law of God is perfect and it converts the soul it changes our lives it makes us different people as we put it into our hearts. The testimony of the Lord is pure. It makes wise the simple. So it helps us, the law of God, the law of the Lord in our hearts, helps us to choose the right, to, to be wise and become successful in life, not only in this life, but to attain to what we're all looking for, which is the kingdom of God, to be successful in that, make us wise, to be able to make make it into the kingdom of God. The statutes of the Lord are right. They rejoice the heart. That is 
something that I think when we think about the law of God and how perfect and uh, true and found uh, it, it, it there's no there's no uh, nothing wrong with we could stake our lives on the word of God it rejoices the heart knowing that we have that confidence that the word of the Lord is right the commandment of the Lord is pure enlightening in the eyes so this is all the things we could say that the law, the law of God does for us when we have it alive in us when we meditate on the law of God daily we have that word of God in our lives that's what we're talking about today what I'm talking about to you today is meditation the meditation of my heart is the title of the sermon the meditation of my heart as we keep that law that word in our hearts growing and thriving really adding to it we become more like God and this is very pleasing in his sight as verse 14 says here verse 14 of Psalm 19 David says let the words of my mouth whatever comes out of my mouth and whatever in my heart the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight O Lord my strength and my Redeemer and isn't that what we want that we want to be in God's sight as acceptable to him to have the words that come out of our mouth to be right now where does evil come as Christ said evil proceeds out of the heart evil things come out of the mouth what is in your heart comes out of your mouth and David is saying let only goodness come out of my mouth why how because the law of God is written there because I meditate on the law of God day and night so the meditation of my heart the title of the sermon today what do we fill our minds with what do we put in there there are many uh, many options in this world of course many things we could fill our minds with but one of the things we could all do and I think we all succumb to this is worry we give in to worry we overthink something put too much we doubt when we start worrying filling our filling our minds with doubt what does God, God say about that Christ said which of you by worrying could add one cubit to his stature can't do anything about it there's some many things in life we just have to accept and not get overly concerned about it accept those situations as they are and ask God for the peace to deal with those things does it matter to God what we think does it matter indeed it does every thought of our mind every intent of our heart matters to God that's what we're getting at today in this message getting at the what's in our heart what are we keeping there what do we have always in our minds when is our mind not working when is it when is it not operating when is it not thinking even when we're sleeping our mind is going it's always going what's in there when do our thoughts actually stop <laughs> when we die that's when they stop so we have to be sure that what's in our minds now is pleasing to God that's what David was praying for that the things in my heart the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing in your sight that's what we desire I think this is a good time to talk about this kind of a basic element of our Christian life meditation on the Word of God because God wants us to direct all of our thoughts to him and what we put on our mind shows us what's what we think of God are we putting his law in our mind or are we filling it with other things we know brethren we're always in a battle to keep the things of this world and the things of our carnal nature out of our minds not giving in to let's say anger on the road yielding to others as the example we've been considering today yielding to others but uh, keeping God's way God's law in our minds 
yielding to him. And when we keep that law of God in our minds, what do we do with it? What do we do with it? We put it to work. Does it, it should have an effect on our lives. We should see the fruit of living God's way of life in our lives. Because real, thoughtful, purposeful meditation is always for that purpose. It achieves the purpose of being put to use, being leading us to action. In other words, we're always thinking about, we should always be thinking about, when we look at God's Word, how does it apply to me? What do I need to do with this? As we hear every, every almost every service, we, the men pray before or after the services, help us to apply this in our lives. There's many scriptures we can turn to that show us the need to meditate continually on the Word of God, His law. Meditate on His creation. All of what we see here today is a beautiful example of God's beautiful creation. It's wonderful to be out here on a day like this and, and experience the breeze. It, it is a little bit uh, annoying on the microphone, but it still feels pretty good, doesn't it? And the sunshine is beautiful out here. We have to deal with a little traffic noise and a few airplanes, but, you know, it's really nice. This is God's creation. And that is inspiring to us. One of the things that helps us to dwell on Him and help us helps us to keep our minds on the things of God. Let's turn to a scripture in Joshua. This is Joshua chapter 1. Consider this scripture here about what God told Joshua to do right before he was to go into the land. Right before he was to conquer the promised land. And we could see ourselves in this because we are also in a battle. We're battling to enter our promised land, which is, of course, the kingdom of God, but also in this life to experience and know the blessings of obeying God and keeping his way of life that come with obeying, obeying the law of God and keeping his law, the blessings even in this life. We're in a battle to conquer and overcome. But this is what God told Joshua just as he was about to go in and conquer the promised land. Joshua 1 and, and verse 8 there. Beautiful scripture. Very beautiful scripture. This book of the law, meaning my word, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it that applies directly to us brethren god tells us put my law into your mind that you may do it and observe to do for then god says to joshua as he says to us for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. We'll see our lives in this life, in this age, starting to reap blessings by obedience to God's will. And we'll see ultimately the glory that we're going to inherit. Day and night, Joshua was told to think on the word of God, not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, God said here. So he was to exercise his mind, as we are to also do. And then his actions were to be directed by what was in his mind. Again, brethren, basic, one-on-one Christianity. This is a good time to think about these things as we're coming up to the Passover. We are, again, like Joshua, we're conquerors like him, but as it says in 2 Corinthians, we could turn there for a moment. We were over there, I think in the sermonette, we, we heard the, something from 2 Corinthians 10. I believe it was later in the chapter though, but 2 Corinthians 10, if I'm not mistaken, we were, or maybe it was 1 Corinthians, we were in 1 Corinthians 10, yeah. So this is 2 Corinthians 10. <clears throat> the wind does make it a little hard to turn the pages. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 10, and then uh, verse 3 there. 
this is our warfare. Remember Joshua was going in and he was, he was in, in physical warfare. But we can relay that right to, or relate it right to us. For though we walk in the flesh, this is verse 3 of 2 Corinthians 10, we do not war according to the flesh. Well, Joshua is a type for us. A type for us as a man who was to go into the promised land and take it by having the word of God always on his mind so that he would be successful. But we war not like he did, but not according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, verse 4, are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing. Where? In our minds. The arguments and every high thing here in our minds, or that try to get at our minds, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And we do that, brethren, by having the Word of God living and alive in us. We meditate on the Word of God day and night. And we, we do that, we study the Word of God, not only to be knowledgeable on it, but we think on it to prepare ourselves for action, putting it to use. So, I've talked about why it's so important to meditate continually on the Word of God. Now let's consider some of the how. How are we going to do that? First of all, take the time. Take the time to, to meditate. Now we always talk about taking the time for prayer, going to a place for prayer, but we really need to do the same for medica meditation. When I go to my prayer place, or my, when my wife does, I know that we're also thinking about our lives and how the Word of God applies to us. We're praying for others as well, praying for our needs as well, but we're taking that time to meditate on the Word of God in a pr private place of our own. But that's not to say we don't keep it in our minds all day long. But we also take that time to think on it, to think about it. God's Word, as it says in Psalm 119, is like a lamp to our feet. Beautiful scripture to help us remember what God's Word is for. It shows us which way to go. A lamp to our feet. It provides us with answers. What to do with problems in our lives that come up. How we should act. How we should make decisions. It helps us not to give in to those wrong emotions when somebody cuts us off on the road. You know helps us to decide, no, I'm not going to do that because I know that's not good. That will only yield, well, yield to, to greater trouble. If I keep giving into that, that will lead to no good. If I keep giving in to my emotions, but instead make a choice to not give in to those, but make the right choice, in this case we heard today, to yield. So meditation is that purposeful thinking, if you will. It, is we do it for a reason, to help us apply the Word of God in our lives. And it takes time. We should all have a quiet place to go to. We really need to do that. Have that place where we go every day. And sometimes you're traveling or you're not in your normal place, maybe at the feast or with relatives or something, but you still go somewhere. And take that time to pray and meditate thinking about the Word of God, how it applies to you. I remember many places I've been to, to, uh, to live and then travel, but when we were in New Hampshire, we had a, a condo up there and it, my office was in the basement and I looked out over a little wooded scene. Just behind our house, there was some woods, a little bit of grass and then the woods. But there was a big window right there and the carpet in front of the window, that was my place for seven years. <laughs> I used that place because it was inspired to me to look out in the window and, and see the creation, but also to, uh, to have that quiet, to have that secure place where I felt God was with me. Prepared many sermons there in that place. Thought about many problems 
We all need that place. A good example from Scripture is Daniel, where he went to his place. Three times a day, we know, to his place. And he prayed. He also thought about the Word of God, meditated on it. Or Christ himself, where he went off to himself to communicate with his Father in prayer and meditation to him. Well, we can choose to fill our minds with the Word of God, but we could also choose to fill our minds with a lot of other things because there are very many opportunities for other things to enter in in this life. We have all kinds of influences. But if we waste our opportunities now to apply ourselves to the Word of God, we're missing out. You know, daily, day by day, our Christian growth, it may not seem like very much. But if you've been in the church for any length of time, and if you look back over where you've been, how far you've come, you can see the changes. You can see how your mind has changed, how you've improved in your thinking. It does work. Your do life does get better. It's kind of way I like using this example, like looking at the grass, you know. You don't see it growing, but it's growing. There's a lot going on in every one of those blades of grass right here around us here. And uh, if we come back tomorrow, it probably is going to look the same, but maybe <laughs> two or three days from now, it'll, it'll have grown. And then if we come back in three weeks and nothing, nobody touches the lawn, it's going to be a lot higher. It's like our Christian lives. We can't always see the growth, but if we're putting that time in day by day by day, meditating on the Word of God and doing those basic things that God requires of us to have His Word constantly in our minds. Over time, we see the, the blessings come. I thought that was muted, but my phone somehow turned on. I thought I had it muted. But. So it takes time. It takes a, a lifetime, really. We have every moment, brethren, and if we waste one of those moments and fill it with something else, we're missing out. We're missing out. We can choose to let our minds dwell on anything, but we know where that all will end. Our own ways end in death. We can even let fear and resentment, pride, jealousy, and all kinds of things take over our minds, but we know where that all leads. But God wants us to think on good things. So let's look at a scripture that tells us that. That's Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And, Peter, and uh, Paul writes to his brethren here, telling them, think on these things. Put your mind here. Verse 1. Colossians chapter 3. If you then were risen, raised with Christ... Seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your, mind, set your mind on those things, not on the things of the earth, but on the things of God. Well, we choose what we think, brother. We choose what we put into our mind. What are we going to put there? What are we going to put there? But the word of God, that's what God wants. And that's what's good for us. When we do that, we have, as God said to Joshua, then you will have success. So let's look at some of the Psalms then, some more Psalms that talk about meditating on the Word of God and applying it in our lives. Psalm chapter 1, a beautiful psalm. We have a couple of hymns in our hymnal, the first two, I believe, um, talking from this very psalm. <clears throat> I love those hymns. I feel like singing one. <laughs> All right, well, let me see. Let, let's see. I think it's the second one. Blessed is the man who does not walk in sinner's way. You know that one? That's Mark Graham. One of my, Mark Graham wrote that. Wrote the music, but David wrote the words. I, I don't have the rest of the words in front of me. Maybe I should pull it up, but um, <laughs> yeah. It may, it may just sing the song. There we go. <laughs> 
Yeah, this is Marx. Uh, Blessed is the man who does not walk in wicked ways, who will not with the scorners sit, nor with the sinners stray. Now listen to this. The law of the eternal shall be his chief delight. He meditates upon it forever, day and night. Yes, yeah, there was our special music for that. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful, beautiful song, or psalm, for us, brethren, the man who delights in the law of God, as verse 2 says. And what does he do? He meditates on it day and night. It's always there, as, jo as God commanded Joshua. And then what happens when he does that? Like, we, he starts to be transformed, as we will be transformed. As Psalm 1, verse 3 says, he'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Like, picture this very, very strong tree planted with roots that go down into the ground and it cannot be moved. It brings forth its fruit in season, whose leaf shall not wither. Whatever he does shall prosper. Remember what God told Joshua, keep this law and meditate it on a day and night and then you will be prosperous. Same thing here. Because that word is always there. As I mentioned, one of the things that help inspire us to think on the Word of God is to be here in a place like this, to see what He's done, what He's made. Surely God has made these things, and a fool would say, there is no God, only a fool. Look at these, this beautiful creation. Look at ourselves and the beauty that He has made in man and woman. And He cares for even the smallest of things. Everything about us, everything, is extremely important to Him. All of our thoughts, everything we think about, is of concern to God. And David pondered this deeply. He was a man who loved the law of God, loved to meditate on it, considered it. Let's look at Psalm 8. Psalm 8, he says, verse 3, When I consider your heaven, so when I look out at your creation, the work of your fingers, this is verse 3 of Psalm 8, and I see the moon and the stars, which you have ordained. I see all of this. What is man? What am I? What is, what is man and the son of man that you visit him? But the fact is, brethren, we are the pinnacle of God's creation. And he wants us to always be meditating on His Word. Always have it in our minds. Always have it. So take the time. Take the time daily to meditate and pause to meditate on the Word of God. Read the Bible. Study it. Think about it. How it applies to you. Try to put it together in your mind. You'll never run out of opportunities to find new meaning in the Word of God. I guarantee you that. I think anybody who's been around a while in the church knows exactly what I'm talking about. We will never exhaust the scriptures to find new, deeper understanding of it. This is a lifelong pursuit. God has given us this beautiful tool to help us Keep the Word of God living and alive. So take the time. The second thing, think how it applies. So it's kind of like a rehash in a way of things I've already said, but to focus on this, think how it applies to me. What do I need to do with what I have, what God has given me, how God's law applies to us? That should be the chief goal of our meditation to think and analyze and then do and then repeat meditate do and repeat think about God's truth internalize it have his words become etched in your mind Psalm 49 Psalm 49 and then you'll be like this wise man 
when you have that word etched in your mind. Verse 3 of first Psalm 39, or 49, verse 3. And then my mouth shall speak wisdom, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of the age, ages, the priceless wisdom of the eternal God, and the meditation of my heart. Verse 3, continuing, shall give understanding, thinking on the word of God, how it applies, you know what to do. How it applies, you get understanding. I will incline my ear, verse 4, to a proverb, and I will disclose my dark saying on the harp. Meaning his mind here is talking about his mind being enlightened to the word of God because he's thinking, how does it apply? What do I do with it? At this time of the year, running up to the Passover, now is the time to think about why, what are we doing with the Word of God? How are we applying it? Are there any areas in our lives that we need to consider and improve upon? We all know some of those things. <laughs> and some of those things God has yet to reveal to us. But 2 Corinthians chapter 11, this very, or second, third, I'm sorry, verse 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5. Very familiar? We repeat this one often at this time. Examine yourselves. Examine yourselves. Think of how you stand up against the Word of God. Whether you're in the faith, test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Christ is in you unless you are disqualified? In other words, take that Word of God and look in it like on a mirror and look at it how, how you look in that mirror of the Word of God. That's exactly what James talks about in First James, James 1. Sorry, James 1. <clears throat> talking about the Word of God being like a mirror. That he looks in it and, and determines, what must I do? What must I do? As he says in verse 22 of James 1. Be doers of the Word. That's the aim of medica meditation, to be doers, to, to apply it, to, to have a goal in mind. Be doers of it, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves, and just be filled with all kinds of knowledge, but be doers. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is a man observing his natural face in the mirror. He beholds himself, yes, there I am, and he goes away, and then he forgets what kind of man he was. He doesn't do anything with it. That's not what God wants for us. Take that word of God, put it in our minds, meditate on it. How does it apply? What do I have to do? And then the third point. Clear your mind of useless things. Get rid of those things. Guard your thoughts from those things that are wrong. Because if you expose yourselves to the lusts that are in the world, they will get into your mind. They will. If you give in to those things, they'll get into your mind and affect your relationship with God. So clear your minds of those things. Don't let your mind become insensitive to God's word by allowing your own carnal mind to guide you. Let God's word be your guide. As uh, Paul says, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, a very familiar verse, another one, familiar to us, but excellent for this, for the application of the word of God in our lives. Don't be conformed to the world, verse 2, Romans 12, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind because you've got the word of God there living and alive let it transform you by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God as you look at it and say how does it apply to me what do I have to do beautiful verse let God's word be the chief focus of your thoughts and keep the other stuff out. Keep the worldly things out. Keep the carnal nature out. But let the word of God be your guide. In Proverbs chapter 4 now, Solomon is giving his heart's advice to his son. 
He wants his son to be successful in life. As, as God wants us to be successful in life and to attain to the kingdom of God. So he gives us this instruction as a, a loving and wise father is giving to his son. God is giving this to us. This is it. I'm, we could go in multiple places in Proverbs and see this loving instruction that a, a wise father gives to his son. But let's look, look at a couple verses here in Proverbs 4 and verse 20. My son, he says, verse 20 of Proverbs 4, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. In other words, take the word of God and give attention to it. What does it mean for me? What is it saying? Don't let that depart from your eyes. Don't let something else crowd it out, but keep the word of God right there in front of your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Meditate, in, a, in other words, on that, on the word of God. For they are life, just as God told Joshua. Then you will be prosperous, as David said. Then I, I, the man who meditates on the word of God is like a tree planted. All he does, it, it prospers. As Proverbs says here, as Solomon says to his son, then, if you keep it in the midst of your heart, keep it in front of your eyes, always, it'll be life to you and health to all your flesh. Keep your heart, verse 23, with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Let's remember, brethren, this is our ground. And we don't want our minds, we do not want ourselves to be taken. This is our ground. And our defense is the word of God, to keep those other things out. Don't let the enemy in and take it. Be like Joshua was, like a conqueror. He was to go in and conquer. And we are fighting not like the, with carnal warfare in the sense that Joshua was, but spiritual warfare. To bring every thought and intent of our heart into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So... Solomon continues here, telling us and advising him, put away from you a deceitful mouth, lies that come out of your mouth, because brethren, we all have carnal nature and we're prone to tell lies. We, that's the way we're, we are. We're always out for ourselves in our carnal minds. So put that away from you. Put perverse lips far from you, like being a tail bearer or anything like that. Get those things out and look straight ahead. Keep your eyes, verse 25, straight ahead. And let your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet. Think about, where am I going? What am I doing? So what is this talking about, brethren, but keeping the word of God alive in our minds and in our hearts so that we know which way to go? Ponder the path. Think about it. So at this time of the year, examine yourselves, ponder the path, and let all your ways be established in what? The Word of God. Verse 27, do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. What good advice. This is how we take the Word of God and apply it in our lives. There's a beautiful section of scripture there. Advice from Solomon to a son, but really from God to you personally. This is what you do with the Word of God. Look straight ahead, ponder the path, establish your ways, don't turn to right or left, keep your foot out of evil. Let's go now to Psalm 119. It's kind of a culmination of the things we've been saying here, I've been saying. Psalm 119, There's, uh, this was in Chuck's emails several weeks ago. Psalm 119, he asked us to think about it, how it applies us to us. What a masterpiece this is, the whole psalm of someone who 
cherishes the Word of God, loves the Word of God, and keeps it always in front of him. I'm going to start in nine, verse 97 of Psalm 119. What does he say? Oh, as the psalm goes, Oh, how love I thy law. This is what he says. It is ever with me. It is my meditation all the day in my thoughts. What beautiful words. This is for us, brethren. This is David, a man who loved the Word of God. Our example today, when we talk about meditation, how long did David meditate on the Word of God? All day. It was always there. And you, he says, 98, verse 98, through your commandments, you've made me wiser than all my enemies, for they're ever with me. They're all around, our enemies are there, but I'm wiser than them. And I have more understanding than all my teachers, verse 99, for your testimonies. That's my meditation. That's what I think about. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. Take that law and put it to work in his life. And I have restrained my feet from every evil way. Every, as Solomon told his son, remove your foot from evil. I've restrained my foot. Why? How? Because I know the word, that I may keep your word. That's what was his guide for us, brethren. Same thing. The Word of God living and alive with us is our guide. Therefore, like David says here, it is my meditation all the day in my thoughts. It must also be for us. I have not departed from your judgments. I've kept them. For you yourself have taught me. How does God teach us? His Word tells us. Living and alive in us. Spirit, His Spirit enlightening our minds we see how to go which way to go oh how sweet verse 103 are your words to my taste sweeter than honey to my mouth and through your precepts i get understanding and i therefore i hate every false way because he could see what's false and what's true because he has the word of god to judge and he has it there because he meditates on it day and night so take that time to meditate on the word of god day and night have a place to go make it a regular habit not only in your in your day-to-day -day activities but thinking about it in your private place musing on it how does it apply don't let other things crowd out the word of god from your minds because now is your opportunity to be transformed into the image of God. You can choose what you put in your mind. Will it be God's word? Or will it be the car your carnal thoughts? Will it be the pleasures of the world? What will it be? You can choose. So take the time to meditate on the word of God all the day, as David wrote. Think of it on how to apply it. In other words, meditate, practice, repeat. Just put it to work in your life. And clear your mind of all the useless things. Get them out. Let the Word of God be your delight. Be diligent to keep your way and your mind directed to the Word of God. Keep it, as Solomon told his son, in the midst of your heart. For it is life to you and all who live by it. But let's go to a couple of more scriptures. This one in Philippians, first of all. Philippians chapter 4. And so the, another familiar one here, but... It, and reinforcing the message here. Finally, brethren, verse 8 of Philippians 4, whatever things are true, whatever noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, 
meditate on these things. And certainly, brethren, we are in perilous times, and they're growing worse. The world is growing darker, and now more than ever, we need to make the Word of God as the chief focus of our minds. This are, is our opportunity now. We must make it the guide of our lives, to put it to work, so that we see the blessings that come from it, and ultimately that lead us to our destination, the kingdom of God. One final scripture, Malachi 3. Malachi 3, last chapter, or last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, <clears throat> and chapter 3. And this describes us, right here. And these days that we're in now, we're right now doing this. Verse 16. And then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. So we come to services and we encourage one another. And the Lord listened and heard them. And so a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name, have his word in their hearts. They shall be mine, God says, says the Lord of hosts, verse 17. On the day that I make them my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Because they are doing as we are doing here. Talking to one another, encouraging one another, keeping the word of God alive in our minds. And so, in closing, brethren, may Psalm 19, verse 14, where it started out, always be our prayer. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer.